Hi, and welcome back. This is part two of why do I have a gallbladder? Now, I've got a little flack and a little feedback on the first video about why human beings have a gallbladder. And so I wanted to go into a little more detail and tell you a few more things that you may not know about why you have a gallbladder and what happens if you don't have one anymore. If uh, you'd like, please take one second and consider subscribing to this channel. There's a little subscribe button right down there you can click. And that way, every time I have a new video, you'll get a notification. And you'll be able to watch that and share it with your friends unless it would offend them, in which case maybe you shouldn't. So why do I have a gallbladder? Part two. Now, we already talked about that really the only reason for an animal to have a gallbladder is if they eat infrequently and if they eat large fat loads, loads of saturated fats, large meals full of saturated fat, and that animals that have gallbladders don't graze. They don't eat all day. They just eat discrete meals. And so you may be thinking already that the, the first video called into question a lot of things. How can vegans be right if we have a gallbladder? Right. That's a very good question. How can the medical advice of, oh, you should graze all day long, you should eat multiple small meals a day, and you should eat very low fat. How does that really make sense since we have a gallbladder that concentrates bile whose only purpose is to digest fat? I don't think it's a I don't think it was a, a sin control mechanism that was put in place just in case we accidentally ate fat. I don't think it was uh, evolutionary forces made this so that if we were naughty and ate some fat, we would have some recourse. I think it's there because we're supposed to eat big, infrequent, fatty filled meals. I think that's why it's there. Seems logical to me. But now if you disagree with my logic, please, please leave a comment below. I love intelligent discourse and intelligent arguments respectful, intelligent argument. And so if you want to call me a name, I guess you can leave a comment anyway, but I would love to debate this issue if someone thinks that they see a flaw in my armor of knowledge or in my logic. So please do that. So let's talk about people who get kidney stones, not kidney stones, that's another video, who get gallstones or who get gall uh, gallbladder sludge or who get gallbladder dysfunction. Why do they get that? And so my theory on that would be, and, and you can tell me if you disagree with that, since the gallbladder is meant to store and concentrate bile so that when you eat a large fatty meal, it contracts. It has smooth muscle in the wall of the bladder, the gallbladder, and it contracts and excretes that bile into the small intestine where it then digests the fat. So what if you never eat fat? then your gallbladder has no reason to contract. And remember, everybody thinks that it just stores bile, but it doesn't. It also concentrates the bile. So as that bile just sits there waiting for you to eat the fatty meal that you're meant to eat, if you refuse to do that and you keep grazing on your small fat-free meals, your gallbladder never has a chance to do its job, which is to contract and expel the bile. When you concentrate any substance, any solution, when you get it concentrated enough, what does it do? It forms a crystal, forms a stone. And that's what happens in the bile if it just sits there and keeps getting concentrated more and more and more, waiting for you to eat that big fatty steak and you never eat it or eat those eggs or eat that butter and you just don't do it. Eventually, that could lead to gall uh, bladder sludge, which could eventually lead to gallstones. It's a fact that many, many people have gallstones and have no idea they have them. Unless you happen to get a CAT scan or an ultrasound, you'll never know you have that gallstone. And the gallstone's there because you didn't eat enough fat. Sometimes if the gallstone or the gallbladder sludge gets up into the duct, the cystic duct or the gallbladder duct, it can stop it up. And then you have what is described by patients as one of the worst right upper quadrant abdominal pains you can possibly imagine. I've never experienced it. And I think it's because I eat lots of fat. And so I don't, my, my bile never has time to concentrate enough to form a stone or sludge. <clears throat> also remember the gallbladder is, is made of smooth muscle. It contracts. So what happens to a muscle that you never contract? If, when you break your arm and you're in a cast for six weeks, 
what happens to the muscles when you get the cast off? Your arm is atrophy, hasn't it? Shrunk. The muscles have shrunk and gotten very weak. Well, it's my theory that the, the muscles in the gallbladder wall, when you graze all day on low fat fare and you never eat that fatty meal like you're supposed to, the muscle in your gallbladder wall atrophies and gets weak. And so some people have terrible gallbladder symptoms, but they don't have gallstones and they don't have gallbladder sludge. What they have is gallbladder dysfunction. And basically the gallbladder has not been called upon to contract enough, uh, often enough, and it atrophies and it just stops being able to contract and expel the bile. And that can lead to severe, severe right upper quadrant pain as well. So some people wind up due to either stones or sludge or uh, gallb gallbladder dysfunction, having their gallbladder removed, a cholecystectomy. So what about those people? First of all, should they have had it removed? Was there not another answer? Well, there are multiple people out there, multiple experts and multiple kooks who will tell you that, yeah, there are ways to get around that. If you have a, a gallstone, you can dissolve it. If you have gallbladder sludge, you can uh, dilute that and get that out of there. If you have gallbladder dysfunction, you can get your gallbladder working right again. I have not seen proof of any of those, so I currently don't have an opinion on that. I do know that if you have uh, cholecystitis that is severe enough, it can lead to uh, life-threatening inflammation and or infection. And so currently, I cannot recommend if you have a gallstone or a gallbladder sludge or gallbladder dysfunction, I can't recommend that you not have it removed by a surgeon. But definitely, if you choose to look into that and look into other methods, I think that's, I think that's uh, rational to do that. I don't think you're being irrational trying to keep a body part that nature gave you. Um, so what about people who have already had it out? It's too late for them. They can never store or concentrate their bile again. What about them? Well, most people who've had their gallbladder out will tell you that for the first year or two afterwards, they had chronic diarrhea or diarrhea if they ate any foods that had lots of fat. And some people have that diarrhea for the rest of their life. But most people, I think the liver steps up production of bile and they also learn uh, by a very negative feedback loop to not eat huge um, meals of fat. They, they break their fat down and eat smaller amounts with each meal. And therefore, the liver doesn't have to produce as much bile. And therefore, they don't have the terrible diarrhea that can go with eating too much fat if you don't have a gallbladder. So, yeah, you can live without a gallbladder. But people tell me it's not a lot of fun to live without a gallbladder. And so it makes your life much less enjoyable. It makes meals less enjoyable. So you really, you want to try to keep your gallbladder, if at all possible, through any means necessary. There, there is a, a, a bile supplement you can buy. And I'll put a link down below. If you want to click on that and read about that and maybe buy that, you can check that out. If you have a gallbladder, you probably don't need that. If you don't have a gallbladder, you might need that. It might help you with your meals and digestion and help with the diarrhea. So to recap, the gallbladder in human beings is not there by accident. It's there for a reason. It's there either through uh, divine creation or through millions of years of evolution, either of which would be way smarter than today's average doctor or surgeon. And so if you want to keep your gallbladder, use it for what it's for. Eat fat, eat uh, intermittently, don't, don't graze constantly all day, don't eat fat-free meals because then your gallbladder will develop stones, sludge, or dysfunction. Now, if this video uh, rung a bell with you, if you enjoyed this, if you'd like to hear more like this, then please subscribe and please take a minute to share this on your social media. And if you would like for me to make videos like this more often, then look at my Patreon account and consider becoming my patron. Okay, this is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.